episode uh, 210, 210, 210, which has a, a slight, well, not slight, uh, a reasonably large radio significance for me. 210, as it was 210 FM, was where I spent uh, a good few years presenting a breakfast show with uh, an incredible team around me who uh, who moved about uh, as far away from me as humanly possible in the end. <laughs> Hang about, not quite sure what that says. There was uh, Matt Hale, who we affectionately called Man at the Back, due to the fact we uh, we never gave him his, uh, his own microphone. Uh, he sounded much funnier from a distance. Then there was uh, newsreader Sue, who um, I think she was from Brisbane. I can't think of Sue's... Um, Sue's maiden name, but she did become Sue Hale. Ah, and the two of them moved off to uh, to Australia. Matt went on to become a, a Perth lad and uh, became a reasonably famous stage and corporate hypnotist, actually, in, uh, in Australia, and that's where he is today. That's where he lives now. And then there was Tony Doe, the newsreader from Christchurch in New Zealand, who, um, who's back there again. Tall Tony, a little old me in the Northern Hemisphere, but uh, happy days indeed. So episode 210 is dedicated, I think, to uh, to Sue and Tony and the man at the back, who quite literally, (laughs) I suppose really, now is at the back, at the back of beyond. Unless, of course, you live in uh, Western Australia, in which case you you may well have been hypnotised by uh, by Matt. I wonder why, for the last 20 years or so, Every time you hear a song by the Rolling Stones, you get up and start dancing like a chicken. Anyway, here we are, Good Friday, with our cameras. It's that chance to go photographing again. It's the the show of the week where I, I grab my microphone, you grab your camera, and we go take some pictures. Photography Daily, the Friday photo walk. It's Good Friday if you observe it, and if, of course, you're listening on the day of release. Otherwise, it's a pretty good time any day to be making some pictures as we walk and talk together. The photo walk edition of the week, a chance to escape into ourselves, earbuds in, chatting about what went on during the week with our guests and what's going on with your photography, your ideas and your projects. The show is again this month, supported by our amazing friends at MPB.com, the number one platform for buying and selling and trading any used camera gear with offices and warehouses now in Brighton, UK, Brooklyn, USA, and now Berlin for Europe. Do you remember Andy Aitchison, who in episode 193, silencing the press, talked about being arrested wrongly, just going about his job as a photographer? Well, after the show, we exchanged a couple of emails. One of them read, I was listening to the podcast yesterday about to eBay two 5D3s, but I heard you mentioning MPB and thought I'd try that way instead. So sold them as a result of listening to the show through MPB. So if you need to buy, sell or trade used camera gear and you're in the States or the UK or Europe, there's one good reason from a very good professional and why you should consider them. Uh, Good news, MPB have your back. So go to mpb.com. Right, ready to walk? Here's the first mail of the week. I've um, I've just hopped over. I'm at the uh, this week. I'm quite local to to home again. We haven't quite escaped the clutches of. Um, I know that our lockdown seems to be easing. Uh, and the restrictions are easing, but uh, I, 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 I'm still not sure if we're supposed to move that far away from home if it's unnecessary. So I brought myself to the reed beds, which I love. I think it's an old reclaimed gravel pit, uh, but it's very mature now. Probably hear the wildlife all around me. And there's just, uh, well, as far as I can see, reed beds in front of me. But uh, there's this uh, old rickety path that takes you out into the beds a little bit more, which is fabulous. But they closed it off to the public. And I looked around me a few times and, well, not quite athletically leapt it, but effectively. Uh, because I wanted to get to the end of this path. And uh, let me get a picture for you. Now, this week, um, the, the temperature has gone up, so um, <laughs> I, I can afford to remove the, the jacket that I, that I had before, but it does mean I haven't got anywhere to... You know how I say usually when I'm making a picture, I'm going to pop you in my pocket and you're quite safe. Um, there is no such safety here. There's me, a killer bee, and, uh, well... On either side, there's a drop, and this just falls into just wet marshland. So, in making this picture... Hello, Mr. B, you're huge. Please, no. 
in making this picture at ISO 200, I'm going to have to uh, not so much not so much pop you in my pocket, but but sort of rest you um, or balance you <laughs> above the marsh either side. If you drop in, that's going to be the shortest photo walk show ever. Hold on. Right, ISO 200, f5.6. I'll make this quite quick, I think. I'm still working with my X-Pro1 with my Yashica 28mm. There we go. Perfect. Let me rescue from the precarious balancing or balanced position. So uh, if you're new to this particular edition, here's what we do. We go into uh, the, the Facebook that we have, the wonderful Facebook group that we have for the show. Uh, we take some of your DMs that uh, seem to be coming through a little bit more regularly now. It's lovely to hear from you uh, through DMs and um, also, of course, your emails. We're a bit low on the emails. I know as we go into summer, uh, podcasting actually, usually in the summer, takes a slight bit of a hit. And so uh, I'm relying upon you to keep the machine fed and tell me what you're up to, what you're doing photographically. Um, any projects that you've got coming up, all that kind of stuff. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, oh, and before we start, a second birthday dedication in so many weeks for John Buskell. Uh, though this time it's uh, for a big friend of the show, not my son. And uh, so a big friend of the show and a patron. So happy birthday, John. I spied on his Twitter feed something that I thought was really important as a, a sentiment to share with you. He said, um, pictures are our only defence against time our only evidence sometimes that we ever even existed. Isn't that fantastic? That really is. What a powerful sentiment about what we do. Amazing, powerful words. But you have to be a bit careful about some powerful words. I used, um, I suppose, a powerful description this week that drew a, a yellow card from Alex Friedrichsen, who messaged me the moment she, uh, she heard it to make me aware of a, a description I used when t talking with Joe... Well, yes, Ian, you were absolutely right to do so, Alex. Wednesday's guest, episode 209, about the, um, well, I suppose frenetic, multi-layered, um, how can I describe it, different one moment to the next job when you're working as a photojournalist in Los Angeles, where one moment you can be photographing a, a big celebrity gala on the red carpet and all that kind of thing, and the next moment, um, yeah, a murder scene. Um, but she wrote a, a DM to me. Hello, Neil. I hope you don't take offence at this, but both you and Joe used the word schizophrenic out of context in the show and used um, in this way it can cause offence to those living with the illness. I understand why you did it. It's how most people use the word, but it doesn't mean split or multiple personality, which is how it's most often used. Schizophrenia is a serious illness where the person is often unable to perceive the world as it is. They commonly suffer delusions, uh, fixed beliefs that aren't true, often to do with persecution, and or hallucinations, seeing or hearing things that aren't there, and a whole array of um, disorganised thinking. It's, as Alex correctly writes, it's hell on earth. I know you well enough, says Alex, to know that uh, you'd rather bite into your own arm than hurt somebody's feelings, and since you're also an advocate of mental health awareness, I thought I'd point this out regards Alex. And, yeah, you are absolutely correct, Alex, to point that out. Uh, you are so right. In Joe's defence, he used it as uh, I had just proposed it within my own sentence. It's, um, it's not a word I think it's fair to say that Joe would, would have used to describe that relationship that, um, that LA news photographers have between all the so very different things that they cover. Um, and he did actually say he'd, he'd not heard it described quite like that before and I used it of course in reference to how it was described by a former guest but uh, yep you're right and I think I did say it on the show that uh, the people might wince at my use of the word so uh, so there's proof immediately really yeah. and in my family actually I had a, a, a very close relative who suffered from a, a form of the condition along with paranoia so, uh, so really I should have known better so I stand corrected um, quick DM from Eves Porter. Loved hearing Joe Pug uh, while we're on the, uh, the Joe Pugliese mention. Uh, I can hear a train in the background. That means I should be off soon to go and get our young Thomas a picture of a train. That'll m move me up a, a couple of brownie points, won't it? 
Um, so, yeah, Eves Porter, loved hearing Joe Pug. What a, a very mild-mannered man in what has always seemed to me like an industry that's anything but. Really enjoyed listening to somebody who's clearly got their feet firmly placed on terra firma. And the story about moving the backdrop around during the marathon, for some reason, that really tickled me. Yes, it was, it was a very good story, wasn't it? Shall we hear that moment? It wasn't, um, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. Joe from episode 209, a show called Bono, Hanks, Oprah, Tyson, How to Shoot the Stars. It wasn't quite what I was expecting him to say. But uh, look, let, let, me, let me play you the piece where it starts with me, actually, uh, congratulating him on the, on the simplicity of, of his composition for a particular personal project, which, um, oops, I got a bit wrong. Isn't that interesting? Because your, your marathon, I, I thought your marathon winners project was very Joe Paul Yesy, really, because again, very simple framing, nothing too complicated, but lots of expression, lots of emotion, grabbing the last line experience. I thought was a great idea. Pretty for some, not not very pretty for others. <laughs> great idea though. Well, I'm I'm glad that you brought that up. Uh, it was anything but simple, and it's because I almost I almost uh, ditched out on the project on the day of the marathon because i had been doing these other personal projects of people in front of white backdrops obviously in the tradition of of uh you know avadon's american west but like not so much to mimic that but to take that idea of what does photojournalism look like in a studio setting what does photojournalism uh portraiture look like when you take it out of context and you really focus on the on the i mean i i would have been just as happy cutting people out but i did want to photograph them on white so i did you know the female mariachis and um marching band and you know all these kind of a portrait series that were on white just because i didn't want to reinvent the wheel um and also the less you can think about the concept the better for me and the faster you get into the emotion of the subject but the marathon posed a huge problem because i set up a white backdrop at the marathon finish with permission and permits from the marathon organization. So people are starting to cross the line and they're yeah. trashed. I mean, a marathon really <laughs> changes your body. It does. Yeah. And so I said, okay, this person's coming over. They're, you know, wiped out. Let's get them over to the studio set. And, you know, the uh, backdrop. Yeah. As soon as they got on that backdrop, they somehow conjured up a smile and a <laughs> thumbs up and a oh it's photo taking time i better transform myself into oh. what i think a photo looks like yeah. and i had a panic because uh that was the opposite of what i wanted mm. and so this is a, a testament to technology but i said the only way i'm going to do this is if they don't know i'm taking their picture this has to be photojournalism and i can zoom in with the long lens but then there'll be the background that out of focus then it'll look like a sports photo which is fine but that's not what i'm here to do and so i quickly thought if i could just get that big flex fill backdrop behind the subjects as they're crossing the line and i could be far enough away for them to not know i'm taking the picture yeah. it can be both best of both worlds. It could be photojournalism with a studio look. And so I had my assistant be right at the finish line and someone would be coming over basically trembling. <laughs> and I would just point at them and my assistant would follow them unbeknownst to them with a four by six foot white backdrop. Good heavens. And I would be a hundred <laughs> feet away with a you know, 300 millimeter lens shooting what I thought was the portrait I wanted to get. They didn't know there, they just ran a marathon. They weren't aware of anything <laughs> or their surroundings. And so it was a mobile sneak up, sneak attack studio portrait shoot. And it taught me a lot of, you know, A, I have to think on my feet. B, I can't settle for, I was there for that picture. How do I get it? I cannot settle for them smiling at the camera. The wonderful calm Joe Pugliese in a world as, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a hectic go-go world in that uh, showbiz Hollywood world of, of his usually. But uh, for those in the Patreon area, you, ha you had a real treat following that, didn't you? Yesterday, a wonderful story in the more episode over on Patreon about the role of 36 that uh, needed a, a very special 37th portrait appearance, Say No More. And did you like the contact sheet from that shoot Joe sent over? It was good, wasn't it? We, we played a game in our house recognising all that were on the sheet. A bit unfair if, you, <laughs> if you're not in the patron area. Um, that, was, that was what was going on yesterday. It makes no sense, Neil, I know. But um, you can support us too, he says with a, a glint, ting, in his eye. 
I'll tell you what, the uh, the reed beds here, the, the water is absolutely clear. I'm almost tempted for a paddle. Here's one from uh, from Jem, as we simply call him. Hello, Neil. I took a walk on Saturday, of course, with the Friday photo walk edition, just to confuse me, playing on my phone. And uh, as you can see, the weather is warmer, i.e. there's fog everywhere. I took out my phone, took a few photos. I think it's safe to say the theme of the day was white. That is not my interpretation of the word warm. If you go to the show page today at photographydaily.show and choose today's episode, and of course we have the link in the in the player podcast app, just follow that link, you'll see uh, Gem's photos. That is not what I call warm. That is what I call immeasurably cold. But they are fantastic. I mean, how, how good are smartphones, huh? That picture of the car just seemingly... Well, it looks like some sort of giant picked up a... From memory now, was it a Mercedes? Just picked up this Mercedes and dropped it, boom, into the snow. Fantastic shots. Surely you're going to be looking forward to a... So it's a spring really arriving, aren't you? Of course, sir, I always like to hear your stories and receive your pictures, just like gems, so that I can feature you and your work on the photo walk page. So if you're sending something in pictures, please, 2,000 pixels wide. They can be black and white, they can be colour, they can be square, horizontal, whatever you like. But just to send them into studio at photographydaily.show. That's studio at photographydaily.show. And here's one from, uh, from Charlie Boss. First time mailer. Ah, oh, it's always a pleasure to get a first time mailer. My little heart leaps it. It does, so it does. First time mailer, Charlie. Hello, Neil. I've been binging the show as I drive across the country to the wildlands of Nevada. It's been an absolute joy to listen to. That's very kind of you to say. The guests you have on are very inspiring, and it's lovely to listen to the stories of so many people from so many backgrounds photographing different things all around the world. Oh, look at this. I've just sort of happened across what looks like a sort of prehistoric settlement. Beautifully woven wood camp here. Nobody's at home. Look at these. These are fantastic. Let me get a picture of these. Hold on. Let's try and get this. So I think about F... F2.8. Because it's in the... It's in the... I've got tree cover everywhere, really. Oh, there's sparrows and house martins dancing in and out of it. Fabulous. Uh, ISO 200 still. Let's get focus and... Oh, I'll show you those later. It's amazing. Anyway, back to Charlie. I'm a young photographer. I'm only 23, but I've been shooting since I was 17. I'm not quite a professional yet, but... uh, Through the last five years, I've realised that my passion lies in photography. I've only done a handful of paid shoots so far, but I'm fortunate to be in a supportive community that promotes local artists. Oh, that is lucky, actually. I shoot film 99% of the time and develop and print in a makeshift darkroom that I made in my basement bathroom. Oh, I remember the makeshift bathroom um, being a a darkroom, or or the makeshift darkroom being in a bathroom. Is that the right way around? Um... (laughs) Yeah, I, I have to say, I mean, that's when I first lived with Sam. She was very good, you know. Never complained about that dark room being in the bathroom. I must admit, it didn't have the best ventilation. Um, so <laughs> there must have been times where she thought, honestly, is this my future? But uh, it's wonderful, isn't it? You lock yourself in the bathroom, light goes off, red light goes on, and you, and you put the radio on, um, and you're, you're in your own world, aren't you? I'm still not quite sure, he says, of my, uh, my path to success within the profession, but after hearing your guests share their stories, I feel much more inspired to keep shooting and printing and making photographs until people start to listen to what I have to say. Anyway, thanks for putting together an awesome show um, and giving hope to a, a young photographer. Ah, oh, I've missed that train. There's one for Thomas. Never mind. I'll get the next one. My Instagram is at Chibo, which is C-H-A-J-B-O. As always, I will put the link, of course, on the website if you'd uh, like to take a look and I've attached some photos from a recent photo walk. Charlie, I will do. That's my job with a cup of tea uh, a little bit later on. Let's, um, I tell you what, let's freestyle an excerpt from one of our amazing 
or I'm going to use Charlie's word, you know it's a word I don't use very often, awesome. One of our awesome guests, shall we? Here's a, here's a piece from episode 26, way back when. Um, it was an episode called Celebrating the Ordinary, with a wonderful street photographer with so much pedigree and history. I'm sure you won't mind me saying that. Leonard Neumann. But to me, these guys are really important. They are photographers, photographers. They are known by the gallerists, obviously. They're known by collectors. The first one is Paddy Summerfield. And Paddy Summerfield did a, uh, an essay a few years ago called Mother and Father. Uh, unfortunately, you can't buy the book anymore, but the images are available on his website. It is the most exquisitely seen Wonderfully composed, it's unpretentious, there's nothing forced, the tones are wonderful, and it's just a simple but very, very deep and compassionate look at his aging parents. And um, so, so it was a it was a personal project that grew beyond it was, was it? yeah, it was basically a book of images of his parents in the garden of their house. I, I think it might have been up in Oxford. The, the, the review on the book said, mother and father is an act of remembrance, deeply personal and acutely observational. It's a reminder of the power of a certain kind of photo photographic attentiveness that has become increasingly hard to find in the age of manipulated image making. I'm always fascinated by these. Uh, oh, that was Leonard Neumann, by the way. Um, I'm always fascinated by these pillboxes. We've talked about pillboxes before, but this one has the texture of a of a lot of um, barbed wire around it. It's, it's almost like it was back in the uh, back in the 40s. These structures, these concrete structures that were were built and just sort of hide away along along rivers and uh, by the coast. That were sea defences that would have had. Um, people inside them possibly i don't know the the home guard i suppose uh, inside them let me get a picture of this one I'm, i don't know because I, i've got what would have been the um the machine gun opening here and it's all mossed over now so let's uh again i think i'm gonna go quite shallow on it f4 um iso 200 I might need to come back a little bit to, to show more, but what I like is the barbed wire and the pillbox. Yeah, I think I've got that. It's a Friday photo walk. Don't wait for somebody else to send stuff in. Be a bit like Charlie. Be a first time mailer. And uh, actually send a mail in over the weekend. Make this weekend the, the weekend that you, you send me a mail. Actually, it'd be really nice to see some, uh, some stuff from Australia and New Zealand. Don't think we've had a photo walk letter from you guys for a while now. Um, and of course, some more from our fabulous European friends. Here's one from uh, Alan Beach. Came in from the Facebook group. He's just joined our Patreon as well. Thank you, Alan. Been loitering stroke listening he says for a while in the free lane just joined on patreon had lots uh, of more episodes to catch up on actually yes you have 26 actually 26 mores 26 schmores would be more appropriate for easter weekend wouldn't it what else to do but a three-hour photo walk or a hike up a big local hill listening to them big question or the big hill rather in question is crook peak in somerset if you pass Western Supermare on the M5, you will have seen it. Yes. Yes, I have. And just returning to photography, after 30 years, it's all changed a bit. Where do I put the film? Thanks, Neil, for the podcast. It's inspired me to get out there and learn and enjoy photography again, providing a welcome break from my day job in IT, which, uh, under lockdown, has become mostly Zoom calls and very long days. Uh, you can see Alan's pictures, actually, in the very friendly Facebook group linked to in today's show notes. Here's one from, um, from our good friend Lars Hegard. Hegard the Dane, of course. He seems a little bit worried about the amount of time I spend getting lost down YouTube rabbit holes. It is something I say a lot, isn't it? And it is something that happens a lot. If I'm um, 
for the Monday and Wednesday shows, uh, an awful lot of research goes into these guests, and you find yourself sort of researching all kinds of avenues. Yeah, sure, wiki and all that kind of stuff for some of the the more well-known names, but also YouTube. And uh, it would be fair to say, Lars, that I do indeed spend an inordinate amount of time down that particular rabbit hole. It's more a warren, as I think I've also described it. But, uh, yeah, Lars says, I've got some ideas. As an alternative to watching random YouTube videos when you feel a, a bit bored, go to Annenberg Space for photography at annenbergphotospace.org. The, uh, the centre, oh, this is a photo centre, isn't it, was closed down in the summer of 2020. But the video lectures remain on the website. They're all free. Lots of them. More than 300 video lectures. They've, uh, there's some years on their backs, but by no means ob- obsolete. You'll find Ed Cashy, interesting as always, he says. Elliot Erwitt in his 80s. But uh, his understated humour, still intact. It is, isn't it? And uh, almost creates a, a vacuum in the room. I think that would be fair to say. I've seen Elliot talk a couple of times. And uh, it's true, pin drop, those two words. And uh, then David Allen Harvey, an excellent teacher, says Lars, and loads of other photographers I don't know or haven't become acquainted with yet. It's a bit of a gold mine, and uh, like in a gold mine, you have to dig around a, a bit to find the most valuable stuff. To give you a starting point, I'd recommend William Albert Allard. Watch the lecture five decades. Actually, there's, um, there's a link here, and I'll, uh, I'll pop that link on the show page, of course, so that you can... Go and see that uh, that particular film. Oh, so many films. He's right, 300. 300 films. Yeah, that sorted you out for a while. But uh, in case you're wondering who Wallace Annenberg is, or Annenberg is the, the surname that I mentioned, uh, her innovative giving ranges from education to arts and culture, from medical research to environmental uh, stewardship, from social justice to animal welfare, always guided by the Annenberg Foundation's core values of community, compassion, diversity and fairness. Wallace Annenberg. Yeah. Actually, on June, June 8th, 2020, that's when it closed. June 8th. Ooh, I've got some things that have attached themselves to me. What are they? Get off. Uh, June 8th, 2020, she wrote these words on the website. I'm writing to share some news, born of the uh, pandemic that uh, upended public institutions across the world. After closing its doors to the public in March, the Annenberg Space for Photography... I mean, it looked, it looked an incredible space in LA. This huge building dedicated to photography. I'm pretty sure, reasonably sure, that Tom Stoddart, who's a bit of a friend of the show, absolute legend in our neck of the woods in the UK, well, I'm sure he was due to exhibit there. Um, but of course he wouldn't have because uh, it closed. Anyway, she said, uh, Wallace said, it's been a joy and a privilege to share my favourite art form with the Los Angeles community for these ten wonderful years. Because a great photograph, and this is, oh, this is a wonderful, wonderful quote. Remember this. Because a great photograph does so much more than capture what's in front of us. It captures what's deep inside us. The trials and the triumphs, the naked eye, rarely sees that's why the photo space has been so meaningful to me i could tell she was um deeply moved by and really 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 didn't want to to move on from her work there what a shame in case i couldn't edit that bit out by the way (laughs) i just tripped don't worry nobody saw It's the Friday Photo Walk show of the week where I take my microphone out with my camera. Actually, it might change. The camera might change over the next couple of weeks just, to, just for a little bit of experimentation here and there. I managed to bag myself with a bit, with a bit of help, actually, from Peter Langman. I managed to bag myself a, a Zorky 4, which uh, is the camera that's, that's used in the artwork for the show. It's a proper Russian camera from the 60s. Um, nothing seems to line up, even though I, I was told it, it had all been tested. I haven't had a chance to test it myself yet, but, uh, yeah, nothing quite lines up. 
the focus does yeah you have to uh, split focus and uh, I'm going to put in I don't know what film to use Giles has been trying to make me use some Delta all right not, not make me but he has rolls and rolls of it so uh, so he's able to supply some Delta that could be fun I've been a bit of an HP man all my life really or FP for some of it so uh, yeah so I'm, I might be bringing out some some film cameras I've got my Nikon F5 and uh, I've got my eye on a quite an old quite a well quite an old Nikon as well much much older than the the five. Oh, I can't remember the serial number of it not the serial number the the model number of it um, oh suffice to say there's going to be some film stuff coming up uh, here's one from uh, so yeah if you haven't listened to this episode before I'm thinking this is a bit different to Mondays and Wednesdays yeah me with a microphone talking about what's been on the show answering mails actually not so much answering mails sometimes but but often it's really comments and thoughts about photography from you and that's the magic part of this without your mails it'll be a very short show indeed so your direct messages your mails um yeah some stuff that's on the the facebook group that we have very friendly facebook group that we have and of course taking the opportunity just to make a couple of pictures as i call them the the something and nothing pictures a scrapbooking really do you know that's one thing i've really noticed though i think i mentioned this last week the amount of aircraft back up in the sky again i'll tell you what aircraft <laughs> i didn't i didn't really recognize this well we had nothing in the sky and lockdown was in full force because uh if ever i make a mistake and there's a, an aircraft flying over i have to start all over again because you can't really you can't really hide the edits where should we go? Ollie, Ollie Parish. With the easing of lockdown restrictions in the UK, is anybody planning some small group photo walks? Personally, I've been gagging to get back into London to do some street photography. What's uh, everybody else up to? What, what are your to-do lists? Now we've finally started to see some light at the, the end of that there tunnel. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I wonder, yeah, right in studio at photographydaily.show wherever you are in the world if you've uh, been on on your own lockdowns of course i'm not quite sure where you'll be i know some some of our friends in europe uh are going into lockdowns but there are plenty of people coming out there are plenty of people that actually aren't in them at all let us know what your plans are for your photo walks and, and your photography projects i've got a i've got a couple of thoughts um i <laughs> It's a bit left field, and actually it goes back to, to Lars just a moment ago talking about being down YouTube rabbit holes. Somehow, I, was, I don't know why, I was looking up um, John Pertwee, who's uh, an English actor. He was, um, he was the actor in, uh, in the 70s, Doctor, I think he might have been the third, was he third? My Doctor Who knowledge isn't that great, but I think he might, might have been third Doctor Who. They, they always say you sort of... Um, you, you can age somebody by who they regard as their Doctor Who. And, um, yeah, mine would have been John Pertwee in the days where the Daleks were really scary. OK, you can make them fly now, but I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with age. But uh, the old cliche hiding behind a sofa, <laughs> that was certainly true. And, yeah, so I was, I was, looking, up, uh, I was looking up John Pertwee... And uh, I came across a programme that uh, he also was a star in, a show called Wurzel Gummidge, which, um, when I looked at some of, some of the old parts of the show, was, <laughs> was really rather terrible. A at the time, I think it was mildly entertaining as a child. But there was a, a field that um, he used to be the scarecrow in. If you've never seen Wurzel Gummidge, and apologies to our friends outside the UK, you probably... Rightfully so, didn't get that franchise. But uh, there was a field, and it was called a Hundred Acre Field, that was it. And Wurzel used to be uh, a scarecrow in this field. And uh, that field is, is only about 30 miles from where, where, I, where I live. And uh, I'd really like to go and do a photo walk there. Apparently there's some signs that say, Wurzel was here. Wurzel was here, if you want that in English. Yeah, so that's one place. Quite fancy Portsmouth. I like Portsmouth. I worked for a while in Portsmouth. 
and the naval history there is fantastic. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Studland Bay. Studland Bay because, uh, well, we've talked about Studland, haven't we? Yes, of course we have. It's where I spent uh, a lot of my childhood holidays. And, uh, yeah, at uh, Old Harry's Rocks, the walks around Old Harry's Rocks. And, uh, oh, just, you know, Stud- Studland. It's a beautiful part of the south coast of England. Quite fancy that. London, yeah. Uh, I haven't ventured much into London, actually. Yeah, during, during, the, during the peak part of the, of the pandemic last year, and, of course, earlier this year, anywhere near London earlier this year, um, there was always that feeling of, oh, you know, do you need to go in? Is it necessary? I did actually have, a, have uh, two jobs, uh, which I which I had to go to and and uh, and do some work at. But um, it didn't fill me with joy at the time. But yeah, we're opening up. That sort of squeamish attitude of uh, us country folk towards going back into London. I think that needs to change. So I tell you what, Ollie, if you find yourself in, in London doing some street work in about a month or two's time, give us a call. Daniel Johnson... I have a question for the professionals. Summer 2020, and in line of Swedish lockdown rules, of course, uh, I shot and filmed on several occasions a very well-known reggae artist called Ika Mouse. His manager reached out this morning and asked for some photos for a book that he's writing. I want to give them a a proper release form. Or is it just simply my name as a a credit? Would that be sufficient? I'm going to do something David Yarrow said and just give them one strong picture. Yes, David Yarrow, our guest, of course, he, um, he was uh, very firm about, uh, well, it, was, it, it, it certainly wasn't about quantity, was it, with, with David? I think he talked of having between, what, three and, three and five good images a year. Oh, I, I'm not quite so sure I, I could work that way with my clients. But, um, yeah, when you're doing what David does in the fine art world... But he did, he did, that's what he said. He, he sort of, he suggested strong images. Keep your strong images. Don't, don't give them loads, you know. Work around your best, the best of the best. But as Daniel says, the picture I have in mind is already up on my Instagram and I'm going to send them a JPEG for printing. Uh, see, a, a lot rides here, I suppose, Daniel, on, on how commercially you feel about it. I mean... If you even want to, to make money, it doesn't mean, of course, you devalue what you do, because the, the very minimum should be um, a properly recognised credit within the book or on the page of the format works. So that would be good. But um, I'm not quite sure whether you know whether you work professionally or or whether you're a semi-pro or an amateur or you know what your status is, even in terms of how you feel about letting them have uh, an image, whether it's, whether actually, because I think there was a further part of this where you, you went to this concert with your son and it was a great personal memory. So it, it might be something that you do because it holds, you know, great, great personal value for you. But um, I, I think I'm going to open this up. I'm going to open it up and uh, see if you could write in with your thoughts on this one. You might have some stronger opinions on that. No, Neil, don't, don't tell him to let them have it for nothing. Um, so if you can write to me, studio at photographydaily.show, studio at photographydaily.show, and we can have a chat about that. Carl Lincoln, listening back to episode 203, Maradona and the 6K picture of a shark. What an enthralling listen. Yes, this was David Yarrow's one, wasn't it? But not always for the best. Oh, I twitched nervously when he suggested, I thought, that artists who don't have some form of business plan are somehow naive. It was very interesting to hear somebody from the world of banking talking about money and photography and artistry in the same sentence. I can't say I warmed, but I did wonder if he had a point about artists having a problem with money or indeed making it. Yes. Shall we play that particular part? I had to um, do a little bit of hunting just to, just to find that part again when your, uh, your email came in. So let's hear that. It was in part two, wasn't it? David Yarrow, episode 203. I always say this to people. My, my mother was a much more talented artist than me in many ways. She was a sculptress and she died penniless. Mm. Because she waited for the phone to ring 
Uh, she had no idea of operating cash flow management, and she didn't go and market herself. I, I, I think that uh, the idea that in 2021, that someone is so sufficiently talented at something that they are able to circumvent the rules of debits and credits and running a business, I think that's in, is naive and arrogant. Um, Justin Timberlake, Adele, looking at, I'm not comparing myself to those giants in, in music, but they're all business people. Of course they are. The, mu music, the music industry is characterized by the ruthless business side of it. So photography shouldn't be. I think it bends back and asks a lot of questions about so many people that say they're a professional photographer. David Yarrow from episode 203. Sure as, what's the analogy? Sure as a sure thing is a sure thing. You remember we were talking about aircraft just a moment ago. I'd uh, just started reading the... Uh, reading an email and over over flew a, a beautiful tiger moth completely put me off my stride because I had to look up and I couldn't get a photograph of it it would have been one of those gnats in the air kind of kind of pictures you know the red arrow pictures I talk about my uh sorry mum apologies my mum used to to make but uh, I love I'm sure it was a tiger moth biplane years and years ago before um just before actually Thomas was born, our, our youngest, uh, Sam bought me a wonderful Prezi, and, and it was to go take a pleasure flight in a in a tiger moth. It was uh, painted yellow, so that would have been in the the R RAF trainer colours of those times. And uh, I went up in this moth, beautiful. Took some pictures, and um, in fact, I have shared this story, haven't I? I put some pictures about a month or so back. Maybe longer, actually. I don't know. The weeks go past so quickly, don't they? And the um, on the show page, uh, but it did, it was quite a twitchy aircraft. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good actually in a, in aeroplanes. Don't like turbulence much on the large ones, but you know, in smaller aircraft. I mean, I spent quite a lot of time flying in smaller aircraft, particularly when I when I was uh, getting my commercials. I've told that story before as well, haven't I? And, so, you know, twitchy aircraft going up and down, wallowing and stuff doesn't really, what well, doesn't usually affect me, but that, this particular day, I <laughs> felt really quite iffy. But, um, yeah, so we had to start all over again. Lots of ideas coming in for interviews. Thank you so much for, for these. Could, could really do with some of, your, uh, uh, some of your thoughts about photography. Don't bash on about it, Neil. Oh, sorry. Um, but um, here's an example of some suggestions. Hello, Neil. Love the show. When possible, I listen to it. On the, on the commute to work, also on Fridays. The uh, Hagel, Hagelslach. See, three weeks in a row now we've mentioned this. Grew up on that as a kid. If uh, you missed the last couple of weeks, we were talking about a, a Dutch breakfast. Well, it's not really a cereal, is it? It's a it's kind of sprinkles thing that you used to put on your toast. Having a Dutch mum, spending summers in Zandvoort with my, my grandparents, Hagelslach, I'm doing my best for the Dutch pronunciation, was chocolate. At least when I was a kid, the coloured sugar puffs and the yellow and pink. See, I knew somebody would know them. Um, they were called, uh, oh, I'm going to get this wrong. Muisjes, Muisjes, M-U-I-S-J-E-S, in those days. I can see that uh, today the names have actually changed on them. Anyway, congratulations to your son. Having raised two teens, girls, already I feel pretty ready for my son, who's one year older than yours. It's uh, different compared to his sisters. He's starting to want to have fun nights with me. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> I just get told I'm embarrassing and I'm not quick enough at playing on the Xbox. I'm obviously doing something wrong. He's starting to test his strength. Uh, lots of fun, so look forward to life, giving you a few twists properly, I would imagine, as he grows up. He did ask for some recommendations. What about the, uh, the, the Danish... Uh, photographer Dennis Skyam. See, you have not been listening. We mention Dennis all the time. He takes some uh, glorious pictures. We featured him actually on the Instagram page as well. He takes amazing shots, says uh, Eric Jacobi Peterson in this mail. Yes, he does, Eric. Uh, for something different, there's the food photographer Scott Chachino from the Tin House Studio, a no nonsense photographer, and also YouTube now. And uh, Alex Berger, the virtual wayfarer. He's an American living in Denmark. So Eric, who I assume is also in Denmark, um, I shall look them all up 
have a little study of their work and uh, yeah maybe we can maybe we can have them have them on that would be strange with dennis <laughs> only because i'm so familiar with dennis um it would be like interviewing an old friend do you know what i forgot to do i forgot to do the last mail of the week time personal jingle hmm let me play you instead a few moments of monday's show to come we've got a good week next week I know that it's uh, for those that observe it, Easter Monday, but uh, we'll, we'll still be airing a show, a programme with Mark Wilson, who on Monday talks about a wounded landscape. Uh, sort of takes up a little bit from where he left off last week when we introduced him. A 750-page, six years in the making photo book based around 22 stories of individuals who survived or were murdered in the Holocaust. It went on Kickstarter which uh, closed yesterday. When I last looked at it, it was just above 150% up on its initial target, which is absolutely marvellous, wonderful, great result. Uh, he deserves it as well. I mean, that's a, it's a heck of a book, isn't it? It's um, a huge undertaking, and uh, I can't wait to be talking with him, or rather you'll hear the conversation with him on, uh, on Monday. Here's Mark. I think telling a very different story about uh, this this particular time and his approach to the Holocaust is uh, is really intriguing, and I can't wait to get the book in my hands as well. We were having some cake, um, and it was some birthday cake, and she told me that you know this was one of her mother's Auschwitz recipes, and my reaction when she said those words Auschwitz recipes was all these horrific things that go through your head, as you know I think you do when when you read that. Yeah, yeah. And and then she told me the story of it, which was really beautiful. Um, which is basically when her mother was in Auschwitz, which is one of the many places she was kept in, you know, when she was a young girl, um, that she'd lie awake at night in the bunks and, you know, and she was afraid. And all the older women, they would talk about food and they would recite the recipes that they made. Yeah. And, and they recite these recipes, one, because it was their way of start staving off the hunger in a way by talking about it, but also so they wouldn't lose them and they wouldn't forget them. Yeah. And so that Ronnie told me that there were um, when she was younger and her mum would make, you know, cake or birthday cake, etc., that it became known as the Auschwitz recipes because it was one of the recipes that her mother had learnt. Mark Wilson returns on Monday to talk about that incredible book project. And that's it for this week's Photo Walk. Don't they go past quickly? If you haven't yet, join our private Facebook group and follow us on Instagram. And on that note, be sure to visit today's website show page for links to guests, Patreon, our sponsors, and everything talked about. You'll find a link on the description in your podcast player app, of course. Music in the show was from Artlist.io, and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you, and talking with you next time. It's another really relaxed walk this week. It really has been. Thank you for your your emails do keep sending them in studio at uh, photography daily dot show at the uh, email address if you haven't sent uh, an email about uh, what you do what your photography is all about what you'd like to do any projects you have anything at all really anything that's sort of inspires others and their creativity that's what this podcast is all is is about really that's what it was always designed to be about so send in those those emails or you can direct message through the the facebook group i'm about <laughs> I've still got a mile until uh, I get back to car. Not sure if I'll bother. I might leave him there. I heard that. No, you didn't. You're a mile away. Well, I did. Oh. See you on Monday. Me too. No, you won't. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.